Knowledge is power when it comes to animal breeding. Identifying bulls with the right genetic profile to make significant genetic improvements to your herd is a powerful management tool. And as you'll see in this next story, it's the type of knowledge the beef information nucleus aims to deliver. Brahmin cattle are the base of our whole herd of cattle. Um, and so I guess we've got, if we can select the best Brahmin genetics, hopefully we can make some more gains. The Brahmin producers like Mark Wilson and Anthea Donoghue achieving gains in their herd survival rates, fertility, growth rates and carcass traits are a top priority. I always see one of the most difficult things when you are choosing sires is knowing that they are going to help improve your herd or um, improve what, uh, what you may be aiming to achieve. The ability to fast track your herd's genetic improvement might be just around the corner. Genetic marker technology can flag whether or not an animal has the potential for a particular trait. The cost of this emerging technology is plummeting, while its capacity to provide information continues to increase exponentially. Instead of taking 10 years to identify where you need to be, you can be there in two years and potentially make a, make a lot more income out of that. But in order to take advantage of the technology, genetic marker tools must be calibrated, requiring detailed information on each breed. We simply have to do this work in Australia to, to fill that need for hard to measure traits data and to calibrate the genomic tools for our cattle and our production systems and our markets. That's why breed societies have embarked on a fact-finding mission, enlisting the help of producers like Mark and Anthea to gather information for a core or nucleus of detailed data for each breed. It's called the Beef Information Nucleus, or BIN project, and data collection for five breeds is currently underway. Charolais and Limousin have calves on the ground, Angus and Hereford are in the first pregnancy round, while here in central Queensland, cattle for the Brahmin bin project are completing their first mating. What they're doing is actually benchmarking the Brahmin breed, I suppose, or benchmarking the, um, um, the future size in the breed and um, hopefully, it, hopefully give them something to build on. And now I think that this gives us the, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to really uh, refine and define um, uh, the genetics of the Brahmin breed to, uh, uh, to take us to a whole new level. The first stage of each breed's five-year project involves the artificial insemination of over 1,400 cows with semen from a variety of elite young bulls. Nine bar. Three, four, nine. Data will then be meticulously collected from the progeny and their offspring. Pregnant. As well as DNA samples from hair and blood tests, measurements will be taken on gestation periods, birth weights, growth rates and carcass traits, but also on as many additional traits as practical. For some breeds, this means for the first time there may be information on rebreed rates, eating quality, flight scores, net feed intake, nutritional content, worm resistance and even methane production. And producers won't have to wait until the end of the project to reap the rewards. They're going to get EBV information feeding back through the next couple of years and that's going to improve the, the amount of data and the accuracy of the figures related to the bulls that they've contributed to the program, which is a benefit straight away. Inclusion of data for difficult to measure traits such as reproductive performance in Brahmins could lift the accuracy of estimated breeding values by 10 to 20 per cent, according to Robert Banks. The same will apply, for instance, for eating quality. Basically, there's very little data on eating quality today, so the bin data will have a big effect on all animals' accuracy for a trait like that. The resources invested in this project are significant, but MLA believes the potential long-term payoff, faster genetic improvement of the traits that drive profit, make that investment worthwhile. Funding is coming from the breed societies matched dollar for dollar with federal government funds via MLA's donor company program. It's a win-win. The information collected will improve the current rate of genetic progress using existing technology while also providing data for the industry to capitalise on genetic marker technology in the future. It'll be improved calving rates in cows, it'll be um improved growth rates and it'll be improved uh, uh, product quality um, 
um, and yield in the meatworks. For producers like Mark Wilson, it means a more profitable, more sustainable livestock industry. You know, more than 50% of the cattle in Australia have got Brahmin influence in them, so if we can um, just improve that one breed, uh, we're making a huge difference to the, to the national cattle herd. Um, so any, any gains that we can make is um, certainly money well spent. Righto, let's go.